So today we are chatting with Miss Victoria. She just graduated our Evolve U six month coaching program and I could not be more proud of you. Not only have you lost about 15 pounds, but that wasn't even our main focus. Our main focus was getting blood sugar in check and reversing the brink of type two diabetes and getting you back into the good range for A1C and getting blood sugar in check. And so all good news from a health perspective, as well as the weight loss, which we always say is a byproduct of health. So thank you so much for taking the time today. And I'll have you just start by sharing a little bit about you and when you started uh, your journey with us. Oh, my name is Victoria. I'm a stay at home mom of four kids. And basically I started with you guys six months ago. Um, and it was mostly just because of the diabetes was the reason I started because I do have that family history. And then with three out of my four pregnancies, I had the gestational diabetes, but I guess after I had my kids, I just stopped thinking about it. And I wasn't necessarily seeing a doctor on a regular basis for it anyway. So it wasn't there in the forefront of my mind to really just concentrate on it. So then I honestly don't know what motivated me to start seeing a doctor on a regular basis, but basically that's how I found out that I had the diabetes. Um, and that was just seeing my, mainly my dad and my grandfather my grandfather had to take the insulin, which I definitely did not want to even go there. Um, and my dad, he got lucky and he just had to take pills, which isn't necessarily lucky. But to me, I thought, well, that's better than having to take insulin shots. But I wasn't happy with either one. Um, and then my brother, he ended up, he was diagnosed. He had to go on medicine. So it's like, OK, I really don't want to repeat family history here. So yeah. basically when he told me that, you know, you do have type two diabetes and you're going on medicine, I'm like, okay, well, I guess it's time to take this seriously because I just didn't want to have to sit there and take a pill for the rest of my life. Um, but other than that, I mean, I've never really been worried about my weight per se. I mean, in the past I've, I've tried a couple things here and there. Um, I've done like the slim fast shakes. I've done the Arbonne shakes, but when I did that, I was always focused on the weight. I never focused on anything else. So like the strength training part of it, because I always thought in my head, it's about what I eat. It's got nothing to do with anything else. Mm -hmm. It's mainly just what I eat. So as long as I don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat after seven o'clock in, in the evening, you know, it's good. And that would last maybe a few weeks. And then it's like, yeah, I'm done with that. So basically, like I said, it was the type two diabetes that got me thinking, huh, yeah. I need to do something. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I know that we had spoken a couple months prior to you starting and you were kind of on the fence and then came back and said, mm -hmm. I got to change something because things are not going in a good direction for my health. So what were some of your biggest struggles or biggest challenges, you know, besides getting that diagnosis, were you having any, you know, energy issues, kind of feeling fatigued or having cravings and feeling, you know, like I was ad not addicted, but like, uh, you know, struggling to prevent myself from eating some of those really calorie dense sugar, you know, treats that you loved when you first started. You know, the funny thing though, if the struggle, I've never had a struggle with food. That hasn't been my biggest struggle. Honestly, it's been the low self-esteem and just not liking the way I look. That's basically, I've always struggled with that. You can ask my mom. She'll tell you that, you know, since I got into, I'd say probably middle school, when it started that I just always had a low self-esteem, which in turn, basically... When you've got a low self-esteem, then you feel like, okay, I'm not good enough mm -hmm. and something is wrong with me. So I've never struggled with food and I've never really struggled with my weight. It's always just been the low self-esteem and the way I look at myself and not being happy with the way I look, but not having the, what's, I don't want to say motivation, the, uh, 
Oh, the drive, I guess, to just, yeah, just, yes, there you go. Discipline to just do something about it. I just, I guess I thought if I just said it out loud enough, then, you know, poof, magic, something would happen and voila. (laughs) So (laughs) how do you feel now? I mean, after putting in a lot of work, changing a lot within your lifestyle, you changed a lot in regards to the types of foods that you consume, the quality of those foods, learning about the right types of foods to help keep your blood sugar stable, even changing things that you're utilizing to serve your family. And you've been, you know, incorporated strength training and along this journey, the weight just kind of fell off. So how has that impacted you and how you feel about yourself? Do you feel that, you know, the confidence has improved and that self-esteem has improved because you've done the hard work. So you pretty much put the nail on the head right there when you said confidence, because that's basically the biggest thing that I'm still, I mean, I'll admit, I'm still not 100% happy with myself. And I don't think, I don't think I'm any different from anybody else that we're all human. We know we're not perfect, but yet we expect ourselves to be perfect. So when we look in the mirror, of course, we're going to pick ourselves apart. And it's, I think we're all going to find at least one thing that it's like, Oh God, I don't like that, but it's getting better. I can look at myself and say, ah, I look look pretty cute in these workout clothes. Or when I put that dress on the other week, it's like, I feel good in this dress. I don't feel like I'm just dressing up and, you know, putting something on just because of what I was doing. I mean, I knew that my body has changed. So it's like, I wanted to put on that dress because I, I guess, wanted to flaunt that, hey, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> yes. That's amazing because so. even, I, I totally agree with you. I think all of us are our own worst critics, right? Mm-hmm. We'll look at ourselves in the mirror. It's very easy to find things to pick apart. Think about when you are in a group photo, what's the first thing that you look at? yourself, right? How do I look? And I think that's just human nature, but the fact that you can now show up for yourself in a way that allows you then to show up better in life and more confident and wanting to dress, you know, better and just more with more confidence is amazing. Um, because I truly believe that confidence is the sexiest thing a woman can wear. And even if we're not there yet, or there's still things that we want to improve, we should still feel good in our skin and we should be proud of the work that we've done. And I think that's the biggest testament for you is you've done a lot of work to make a lot of changes and that's shown, you know, in your lab work and how much that has improved in your energy and your strength and the improvements there and just your consistency to continue to show up and follow through with some of those things that we were maybe kind of doing here and there before, but now you've really instilled as just part of your lifestyle. So before, you know, coming, you know, to us, like, how did you feel? I mean, how did you feel just like physically again, kind of going back to like, were there any digestive issues or was there any um, issues with energy or just like you mentioned, like the drive for life or, you know, mood that has kind of shifted now? I would say I don't like physically, I don't really recall feeling a whole lot different than what I do now. I think for me, most of it is just the mental journey, honestly, that it's amazing how you feel when you know you're putting junk in your body and it's not really doing you any good. And in turn, you're giving that same junk to the rest of your family, then you know, in turn, that makes you feel even worse about yourself. Mm-hmm. But then once you start changing those things, and like now that I've pretty much got a good idea of what I want to put in my body, now I can, and this is probably going to sound bad, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> now I can somewhat shift the focus, not only on myself and what I eat, but now I can shift some of my focus to okay, I'm going to make more of an effort to basically try and give my kids as long as they'll eat it. Two out of the four will pretty much eat what I give them. The other two, that's a different story. But anyhow, (laughs) that I can focus a little more on, okay, I want them to eat the way that I eat now. Mm -hmm. So like I said, this whole journey, it's been more for me mentally 
a mental journey than just as much as it has been a physical journey. So that's the biggest change I have walked away with is just mentally I'm in a better place. I'm not perfect by no means. Like I said, I've been working with you guys for six months to get where I'm at now, but I know that it's going to still take me the rest of my life to stay where I'm at. So it's a lifelong journey. It doesn't end just because I've graduated, but definitely it's the mental, mental journey for me is the biggest thing. Yeah. And that's amazing because a lot of people only focus on like, let's say calories, right. Or macros, you know, how much should I be eating and, and the scale and and things like that. But we often don't realize how important the mental aspect is. And you hit the nail on the head. This is a lifelong process. It's we're always ever evolving, right? I'm still evolving. Becca is still evolving. All of us are ever evolving because we're also going through different seasons of life that require us to challenge ourselves in different ways and continue to challenge those beliefs that kind of sometimes sneak back in, right? Those old thought patterns that really those habits die hard and continue to, you know, reframe the thoughts and remind ourselves that, you know, from the confidence perspective, we're worthy of showing up for ourselves and prioritizing ourselves. And, you know, I know with the four children that you have very busy caring for two of them, you know, full time, and that takes a lot of energy from you. And sometimes that can make it very easy to rationalize, maybe not doing things for yourself, but I'm so proud of you that you have, you know, taken these six months to work on you. And I have no doubt that going forward, things are only going to continue to improve, especially from the health perspective. And as you continue to share your journey, maybe with family or friends, showing your kids a better way, that's the impact that we want, um, you know, for our clients to walk away with is that lifelong transformation not just physically, but also internally and mentally. So tell us a little bit about like, what are some of your goals now? Have you thought about what you want to do, you know, for yourself moving forward? Basically, I think the biggest thing is going to be consistency. I just want to make sure that I can, the big thing is continuing with the strength training and still continuing to push myself to make sure I tell myself, okay, you got you got to lift heavier. You got to stick an extra five pounds on that dumbbell. Come on. (laughs) Um, So yeah, basically it's just the consistency to make sure I keep up with that. And then basically just maintain where I'm at, because like we touched on, I mean, I'm happy where I'm at. I don't feel like I need to lose anymore. I don't want to gain anymore. And I feel confident with the food choices that I make. I'm good there. I can be consistent with that. Um, I think it's just going to be the strength training is making sure I'm consistent with that on a weekly basis and making sure that, you know, I push myself when I feel like, okay, this is getting to be too easy. I can lift this. No problem. Time to add some more weight. Yep. Come on, Lombatis, get your butt in gear. (laughs) (laughs) You need, you need that strength to lift those those kiddos and prevent injury, right? As as we age too. So um, I love that you mentioned that you feel confident in your food. And I want to just, you know, touch on the fact that when you first started with us, food intake, not the quality wasn't the best, but also overall, you weren't eating a ton. Um, And so that's been a really big part of your journey too, is I've pushed you to eat Mm -hmm. a lot of food, um, and balance that food and understand, you know, how you can, you know, build meals. So now, you know, we've practiced not tracking and maintaining and still feeling really good, uh, towards the end of the program there. And so I just, I love that. And I hope that you will continue to nourish your body with enough energy and eating enough 1400 calories we know was not enough for you. Um, I think we were at one point eating like 2,000, 2,100. And you said, Liz, I don't know. Is this okay? Are you sure? And (laughs) your body responded uh, well in all aspects. So um, what would you say are, you know, maybe a few favorite things uh, about working with us throughout the, the journey? I would say the biggest thing, and I don't even think this is a word, but I'm going to say your guys' regalness. I mean, as far as you're down to earth, you keep it simple. And I mean, you guys have the knowledge. 
the guidance, the support, the accountability. Um, and it's just, you know, that there's going to be hard truths and you're not afraid to tell your clients that. Um, but at the same time, you're patient, you guys are understanding, you're empathetic, you know, you understand that each person is an individual and you don't try and like group your clients into one big group and say, well, this worked for one person. So it should work for you. It's for like, you guys else. are very, you know, everybody's different. Everybody is in their own situation. So your coaching style, you cater to the individual. You don't cater to just like the general population. You're very individualized. So that makes it nice because I never felt like you guys treated me like, yeah, she's just another client. She'll either figure it out or she won't. <laughs> that you guys definitely treated me like a person. You gave me that one-on-one -on -one accountability, the guidance, the instruction, the direction that I needed, because I'm just, I'm not one of those people that obviously can take it upon myself to do something and give myself that discipline to do it. I basically need something set out in front of me, wrote in black and white or through messenger, through email, whatever, yeah. telling me what I need to do for my situation, not for somebody else that's got type two diabetes, because I'm happy with the fact that was it. I guess I didn't touch on that, but that was my other reason for, you know, taking this journey is I definitely did not want to wait until I got to the point where I was having major medical problems because I mean, I got lucky. Obviously I stepped in soon enough. I caught it early enough that you know, I've never had those major problems or I guess major symptoms that unfortunately some people with type 2 diabetes have. Um, I had an aunt actually that, oh geez, by the time she passed away, she lost both of her legs. And I think she had a total of like maybe five fingers when you put her hands together and it was all because of diabetes. So I got lucky in that aspect that I didn't wait until I started having major problems. I wanted to nip it in the bud and stop it before that even happened. So, yeah. So that's taking ownership and accountability. And that's what we love because ultimately only you can do that, right? Only you mm -hmm. can, yes, I'm willing to change it. Only you can put in the work. We can guide you. We can educate you. We can encourage you, but we can't put the food, you know, in front of you or in your mouth right. or do the workouts for you. And so again, it's just a testament to the fact that you said, I want to change my life. I'm here to do the work and you stayed consistent. And yes, we had challenging weeks. Yes. We had, you know, different times that were a little bit less, um, you know, intense than other times, but that's life. And um, exactly. that's what we understand, especially with your lifestyle and the demands in your personal uh, life. It has to be tailored to you because it has to be something that's realistic for you to follow through with. And so, um, you know, Becca and I so, so proud of you. And we're really excited to see just how you continue to thrive on your own. I have no doubt that you're going to do fantastic on your own. You have the knowledge, you have the tools, you have the education. And I know that you will continue to uh, push yourself in the ways that you need to. So if you were going to recommend coaching, let's say like to your best friend, um, what would you say to them about Fit Mom or Evolve? Basically what I've already said, <laughs> um, that it's not, how do I want to say it? Um, that, like I said, it's not like you're, I think a lot of coaching programs or even like these weight loss supplements you can get. And I'm not bashing anybody by no means, cause I'm not familiar with, let's say, you know, like Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or stuff like that. I don't know exactly what they do, but to me, it's all about the one-on-one -on -one attention that you guys give to your clients. Now they may do that. I don't know, but that's just, that would be the first thing I would say to my best friend that, you know, you're going to love that weekly support. That's the other thing that I've loved. It's not 
something that, you know, you check in with somebody once a month and then you don't hear from them for the rest of the month. And, you know, before you know it, 30 days go by and God only knows where you're going to be come next month. But with you guys, you get that weekly check in and you guys are so easy to get a hold of. I mean, you make yourselves very available, whether it's through Messenger, through the Facebook group. It's not hard to get answers. And if you guys can't get the answers, which doesn't ever happen, but we also have that Facebook community that we can go into and ask questions. Yeah. Um, but, and like I said, it comes down, you guys are just you know, down to earth. You say it how it is. You don't sugarcoat everything. It's like, you tell us what we need to hear. And yeah. that's pretty much it. I mean, I can't say enough about how easy it is. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not an easy journey. Don't get me wrong. Um, Cause I've had days where I wanted to just say, screw it and <laughs> just yeah. get back to my old habits. But you guys make sure that, well, yeah, you know, you're going to have days like that. You're human. We're not perfect. Mm-hmm. And it's, you've always preached, you know, don't be ashamed of yourself either. That when you have days where you just sort of fall off the wagon a little bit and you don't exactly do what you need to do, then you shouldn't beat yourself up for it. You shouldn't sit there and be ashamed of it. It's just part of being human. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you wake up the next day and you pick, put your big girl pants on and you can get going. back on the wagon. I mean, yeah. it's just, you guys are very non-judgmental. Non- judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, because... We know that not every day is perfect. You know, life throws you curveballs, things happen. The sun is shining and one day is perfect and everything goes your way. And the next day, the storm is here, whether it's actual weather or it's your kids or your husband or, you know, just life in general. And those are the days when we push through when we do what we can, that we learn the most about ourselves and Mm -hmm. nobody's journey is ever perfect. So what advice, this is the last question. What advice would you give to new clients, new members, kind of thinking back to when you first started um, and kind of coming through your whole journey, what would you say to them to encourage them as they begin their journey? The two biggest, biggest things I would say is love yourself and be patient with yourself, <laughs> but you also have to be willing to put in, put in the work. Cause like you said, you know, you guys can give us all the knowledge in the world. You can give us the tools we need, but if we don't take that and do something with it and you have no intentions of doing anything with it, and you're just going to let it go through one ear and out the other, then, you know, don't waste your money. But if you want the results, you have to put in the work. But at the same time, you know, you got to be patient with yourself because it's not going to happen overnight. It took me six months to get where I'm at now. And like I said before, it's going to take me the rest of my life. I'm only 44. So, you know, I got lots of living to do, but it's going to take me the rest of my life to maintain where I'm at now. It's not something that I can just say, okay, well, the six months has been fun you know, back to my old habits, but you just, and you got to push yourself. You can't get comfortable for too long. You can let yourself get comfortable, but the minute you feel yourself getting too comfortable, then that's when you need to push yourself to where you are uncomfortable in order to get the results. What's that saying? Something about, uh, it's like rewards and I can't, it's like on the tip of my tongue, I can think of what I want to say, but I can't find the words. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, pushing yourself. I mean, you definitely, you reward yourself in different ways, I think from, than from food. And maybe that's one thing that you've learned on this journey is that, you know, for example, being down 15 pounds, instead of rewarding myself with cookies or donuts or cake or whatever, no, I can go out and I can buy buy a dress. (laughs) what go buy a dress that's how you can can go buy a dress dress. (laughs) yes and I can rock that dress um I don't know if that's what you were thinking but that's one thing that my mind (laughs) has to do uh in terms of rewarding yourself for the journey is many people often 
resort back to old habits because they do get that, you know, they get comfortable. And that's where we start to let things kind of slip back in and got to catch those things quickly. We want to enjoy life. We want to enjoy some of those treats from time to time, but we also don't want to get back to the place that we were before. But I have no doubt that you are going to continue to maintain and continue to evolve on your own and just continue to nourish your body and nourish your family, which is also amazing. And you'll have to keep in touch with us and let us know how things are going because we always want to hear from our clients, you know, just because we're not talking to you weekly or every other week, one-on-one, we still want to know how things are going. So reach out every now and then say hi, just let us know um, or ask questions. If you've got a quick question, don't hesitate to ask.